Hi, welcome back to Autobeta 2T. I'm Dave and today I'm going to be measuring the engine for my Kawasaki AR50 with its 93cc big ball kit. Why am I doing that? Well, currently we're at 17.8 horsepower. I've done quite a lot of mods. I just want a nice line in the sand of actually where we're at. Um, so I'm going to measure it today. I'm going to measure my ports as well. So I'm not sure if you're going to agree with the way I do it. Let's know in the comments what you think. Rhino, the Magnificent, asked yeah, about a fuel test. Yeah, something I'd like to do, probably need to adjust the compression to get the full gain of race fuel, but something, maybe now, maybe later, talking about that, chapter one. So currently I speak to Daryl the other day, we could split it down, uh, it'd be good to, the original Practical Sports Bike Magazine article, keep to the restrictions in that, let's get to 100 mile an hour, pretty much how, with the spec they had, and then once we've achieved that, then we're going to go for chapter two, which will be, kind of restrictions eased a little bit just to see how fast we can actually get out of the Kawasaki AR50. So that is to come in chapter two, currently chapter one, let's get there. Uh, I'm also looking forward to Patrick Garage. he's been doing some tests on a fuel injected TZR250, he's got his own dyno, link in the description to his channel. Talk of the subs, I was having a look through the other day and I was uh, pleasantly surprised that I got a new sub from a guy, channel called Two Stroke Stuffing. I'm sure everyone knows, knows who I'm on about. So Alex, uh, yeah, if you're watching, thank you very much for the sub. And uh, yeah, hopefully you're enjoying what I'm doing as much as I enjoy uh, what you're doing as well. So uh, welcome. Right, measuring. I'm trying to re-measure everything. Uh, issue I did have, I measured everything with this piston. Now, this has got Dyke's ring on it. So at the bottom, about 54 and a half. However, at the top, because of the way the ring sits, quite a lot thinner. So a couple of mil down. So the problem with that is, that's the port, and obviously if, I'm, if I was going to measure that gap there, I'm getting that, which is good. But this one, the piston needs to come up further. So I'm effectively measuring there, so it's going to give me an incorrect reading, which I think is what was happening. So, I'm still not happy with the best way of doing that. I've tried it like this, I'm not convinced. I've machined this piston, it's an old X7 piston. Uh, just machined it flat, so I've got a flat surface there. Okay, so I've settled on a method. Um, you can use this 45 degree approach, but I still think there's a certain element of this going on where it can actually end up being a little bit higher because it's actually there and there so I'm going to use this bit of wire but flat uh, so for the exhaust I'm going to trap it in like so to the highest point move it around I think it's about there Measure that. Okay, measured several times. And I get twenty between twenty point four five and twenty point five five. So I'm gonna call that twenty point five. Minus the one mil for that. 19.5 my homemade calculator I've got an 8mm conrod there's no deck strokes 41.6 and I'm not doing the inlet just yet so I've re-measured the exhaust what do I get 19.5 gives me 201.9 transfer A 31.9 so about 130 that's good 29.6 32.3 that's about 127 and the boost or C port 32. Again, about 129, so within the ballpark. All the maths from this was taken out of the Grain Bell book. Quite a few people have told me I should read. <laughs> I have. Okay, I'm going to take the engine out. I think it's easier for when I'm measuring the squish, uh, everything's out of the way, so 
and I've got a bit of an oil leak as well so I want to have a good check to see where that's coming from so we shall start taking apart luckily it's not too difficult the squish now so the way I do it I get a bit of solder out of here and I put it on there I stick it on so a bit of brake cleaner give it a bit of a clean I'm just gonna use some sticky tape to stick it on Right, I'm going to try and turn it over on that. It's quite tight. I might have to use the kickstart. So I bring it up nice and flat. What I need to do now is get that a measure. 0.45. Seven. About 0.45, it's a little bit tighter than I thought, but possibly a little bit too tight. Yeah, about 0.45. Maybe a little bit too tight. Let me know in the comments. So, let's check the compression ratio next. I'm just going to find top dead centre. I can just feel it. I could do it with a gauge, but there's a dead band and it's just there because it'll go down. Dead band down. So about there. That's my top dead centre. So we'll put a little bit of grease on here. There is a little bit of volume in there, but it's just to stop everything going down. Wipe the excess off. A little bit of grease around there, It'll just help the O ring in the head seal. So I'm going to stick the head on now. Put these back on and uh, I'll meet you once it's all done up. Right, check the volume. I've got my barrette. It's going to focus. And it's a little above 16. So I'm going to drain a little bit out. Into a cloth. So I'm at 16 now. If you can see if it will focus. Focus. It's on my hand. So it's 16. <laughs> Does not want to focus. Right, so I'm starting at 16 and then I'm going to fill it up to the top of the plug hole and then see what I'm left with. Okay, so we started at 16. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Quite nine point two. So well you can see there if I go down and rock up you can see I am actually at top dead centre. So I go down and up. No air. So I'm happy that is full. So all I do when I'm done, I've got these little pipettes and I just siphon it back out again and just so everyone's aware I have measured this plug hole so I put some tape on the bottom filled up to the top of there when it was level and I got 1.6 cc 
I also measured how much fluid can go into this gap between the outer ring and the inner um, electrode. That was 0.2, but also to account for it, my head, I've got a spark plug. It doesn't sit flush. So with the spark plug in, in theory, this bit sticking out at the end, if it was solid, would displace 0.2 mil. So I'd need to remove 0.2 off. However, because I can fit 0.2 mil in there, it basically cancels itself out. So I'm going to use a correction of 1.6. So for this head that I've been using, I've done some more tests. So I've done an average. My average was, I was getting for CCs corrected. Uh, 7.6 so that works out at 13.8 to 1 or 7 to 1 corrected allowing for the new exhaust port revision the squish clearance is 0.45 mil possibly a little bit too close and the squish area ratio is 0.5 so that's the head done last up I'm just going to check this so I'm going to whiz it off Open it up and just double check what jetting I've got in. So this is the carb. It's a PEV 20H6. It came off as I remember um, a KX80 or 85, one of the two. It's 28 mil. Um, seems to seems to work pretty well actually. I might get some more needles at some point. Again, take it apart. It's all genuine. These are genuine jets that I got, and I'm going to read that out to myself now. So it's a 130 main jet, and this is a 55 pilot jet. I've even taken a needle out so you can see it's in the middle clip, and I've got my loop out, which allows me to see because it's really, you're not going to see it on here. And it's really hard, but under strong light. This needle code is N99 Alpha. So I'm going to look that up, see what that is. Right, so now we've got a good base set of data for the 17.8 horsepower where we're at now. We can move on from that. If anyone wants a copy of that reference data, email me autbeta2t at yahoo.com. Uh, next time we're going to look at flow testing. I want to get the flow test and I want to get a good procedure going on a flow test of the exhaust and transfer, see if there's any bottlenecks there. So we're going to explore that next time. And uh, most importantly, thank you for the uh, subs, thank you for the likes, and really big thanks for the comments, that interaction between us all. Really, really good, and I really appreciate it. So um Catch you next time, I guess. Uh, cheers. Thank you.